Ah, whoa, whoa, money. Oh, psh, it's only a five dollar bill. Never mind. I'm not picking that up. It's not worth my time. Oh, money. Whoa. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a fifty. I'm not picking that up either. It's not worth my time. To survive eBay, you've got to become eBay. Hey guys, Trent here coming at you with another video. Today I wanted to talk about the topic of uh, reselling on eBay in regards to flipping the small items. And what I mean by small items is uh, small amounts of profit. And whether it's worth your time, is it not worth your time? Are you working a minimum wage job by doing it instead of fulfilling your dream of, you know, being this uh, mega baller reseller? Uh, there's a lot of different varied opinions on out there. Uh, a lot of them kind of preach this idea that if you're listing an item that doesn't make you at least, oh, ten dollars profit, some people it's 20, 30, and I've heard even as high as fifty dollars profit that it's not worth your time, or at least not worth that particular uh, reseller slash YouTube personality, whatever the case may be, it's not worth their time. There's of course a lot of different factors that go into why that may be, but I just wanted to uh, delve into this topic and give my opinion. I think one problem with these, these videos in regards to topics like this is, who is that audience? What's the target audience for that? I mean, if you're talking a brand new reseller, I mean, are you trying to tell a brand new person who's trying to learn to resell on eBay or whatever the case may be that if an item isn't worth $50 profit that they should just pass? I mean, uh, yeah, good luck with that. So here's a PowerPoint I made real quick to kind of like lay out what the topic is about here. So here's some things I hear on the videos. I'm going to give you some examples of videos and some YouTube personalities that have some videos out so you can go check those out. and. Uh, you know, get the, I guess, the other side of the opinion, the other side of the coin in regards to this topic. But, uh, so, here we go, reseller YouTube personality theories on why to avoid small profit items. And the biggest one I, I always hear is that, you know, it's not worth their time. To support that argument, they're saying that, you know, when you're taking the time to list an item that only makes you $5 or whatever, $6, that you're basically working a minimum wage job at that point. So, in red is my kind of like my rebuttal or what I'm basically I'm saying hey hold on what about this uh, and I would say in regards to that it's like based on what math and we'll get into that so actually let's get into that portion of it right now so so I've heard it said it's like you know you get these items that only make you a couple bucks five dollars profit that at that point you're you might as well just work a, a regular job so the argument is that the same amount of time you would spend on an item that makes you five dollars profit would be the same amount of time you're going to spend on an item that makes you $50 profit. Yeah, that may, uh, generally speaking, be true on average, but so I gave my, so I did a little skit at the beginning of the video, you know, where it's like, but that's kind of like what I would equate this whole argument to. It's like, you're going to pass up five and $10 bills to, and only pick up the $50 bills. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense unless that there's just so many, there's more $50 bills for you to carry Then obviously that's a different story but the thing is as resellers I mean I think for any reseller to say that they get so many highly profitable items that they literally don't have any time to supplement with the smaller profit items I think they're blowing smoke I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that unless you know obviously if they're on the next level where they're getting items distributed to them and stuff like that wholesale and all that that opens a whole different ball game but for the uh the, the thrifters, the pickers, the daily pickers and stuff like that, you've got to supplement your your listings with items that aren't going to make you 50 bucks every time. So another thing that always gets thrown around is they're talking about the amount of time, and I've seen in comment sections people people's, the time that they claim it takes for them to list items. And I'm a little shocked. Maybe I'm not in touch with reality, but I mean, I've seen people say it takes 10 to 15 minutes to list an item um, or maybe that's the total time they have invested in an item or something like that and I'm thinking what where are they getting these numbers from because I'm pretty confident it doesn't take me that long to handle an item especially an item you know a low profit item I mean obviously you're gonna pick a low profit item 
that is one that's easy to list and ship and all that stuff, generally speaking. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying you're going to, you don't want to spend $20 on an item that you have to do a lot of work on and it's only going to make you $5 profit, but you'll spend 25 cents on an item that that you can list quickly and easily that's going to make you $5 profit. So let's do some math in regards to this and see if we're working minimum wage. So, I mean, I've heard like it takes 10 to 15 minutes to list an item. I don't think I necessarily agree with that. I guess you have to figure out your listing practices, but you know, I like to snap a bunch of photos of a bunch of stuff at once. So realistically for me to photograph an item, it takes me probably 30 to 45 seconds. Obviously when you're sourcing, you're spending hours doing that, but you're already sourcing you're already there spending time sourcing. I'll speak a little bit more about that. But what I mean is that you're already spending the time there. So you're telling me you're going to pass up on five and $10 bills when you're already spending the time to get the $50 bills. That doesn't make any sense. Why, you know, you, you pick up an item and you research it and you find out it can only make you 10 or $15 profit. So you're going to pass up on that. You already spent time uh, picking it up and researching it. Anyways, let's do some math. So let's just say it does take 10 minutes to do a listing, right? or 10 minutes the I, the time you're going to spend on one of these low grade items and I'll get into some of those uh, um, kind of the ones that I do uh, that makes me those low profits that I have no problem and in fact I'm glad to have them because it supplements my listing it supplements my listing and stimulating the eBay algorithm which I'll cover as well so anyways uh, 60 minutes in an hour we'll divide that by 10 because that's how long it takes to do a listing supposedly so six listings an hour I mean I I know that that's not, to me, that's slow. And if that is you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Just, you know, figure out how to step it up. You know, that's maybe that's an area that you need to work, uh, work on in your business. Now, when I do this calculation, I will, I'm going to use $5 profit as, as the example. Cause I, I, I am with the idea that generally speaking, if you're talking about going out and picking individual items, you probably, yeah, you, you want to at least set a minimum threshold of profit of five bucks uh, that you anticipate to get. I would say, then yeah, if we're talking only making a buck or two, it, generally speaking, it's not worth your time. You know, and I'm not talking about bulk wholesale deals and stuff like that where you get a thousand of one item that yeah they only make you a buck a piece, but you list it one time and it once you sell them all out you make a thousand bucks or whatever. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the individual picker picks that you get from a yard sale in a thrift store. So six items an hour uh, and you make five dollars uh, profit for each item, right? So 30 bucks an hour. So your time isn't worth 30 bucks an hour. And this is at the, this is the bare minimum, right? These are the, just your bread and, lowest of bread and butter, not even bread and butter items. You know, these are the ones that you just picked up. You said, ah, oh, why not? It only cost a buck and I'm going to make five dollars profit on it. That, those items and handling those items isn't worth 30 bucks an hour. So 30 bucks an hour times, let's pretend like we're like we're working a 40 hour week if we were, $1,200 a week. A month would be 4,800 times uh, 12 months. Yeah, almost a 60 grand before taxes uh, salary a year. I mean, that's not worth your time. And this is uh, of course, again, on the low end because these are your most least profitable, uh, sorry, these are your least profitable items. So how is that not worth your time? If it isn't worth your time, then that means you're sourcing so much better merchandise and good, keep going with that. Obviously, if you get more highly profitable items that you can handle, that you can, you know, that you have time for, obviously you are gonna start passing up on some of these lower profitable items. I just don't think it should be excluded because you think you have to set some kind of standard for yourself because the YouTube people think that that's the way it should be all right so the second portion here uh, you could have instead been listing higher profit items okay I kind of talked about that a little bit uh, I don't think it's as simple as that though because the key factor here is you have to find those higher profit items they're out there of course and you're gonna get those obviously you're gonna go for the highest profit stuff first but but realistically, if you set some ridiculous profit margin that you have to get, you're going to be passing up on a lot of $20, $30 bills or $15 bills, $10 bills even, uh, which that's the bread and butter you need to keep your business going and keep you motivated and keep you successful, to keep your eBay algorithm going, to keep your uh, sales numbers up. 
again, if I'm wrong and you just you have $50 bills thrown at you all day, there are people are giving them away at yard sales, then you know obviously do that. But at, generally speaking, the average reseller, especially one that's starting up, that's not the case. So you're going to have to supplement with bread and butter items to keep your business boosted up and continue to grow it. Death piles, another argument that uh, resellers talk about, you know, that I'm going to show you where to find a rake and profit video where he talks about, you know, he had a buddy that has a death pile of, you know, a thousand items or something like that. And it's and because he keeps buying all these items that are only going to make him a couple bucks. First off, yeah, I mean, when we're talking items that make you only one or two bucks, uh, unless you're paying really cheap for them and and you just don't have anything else to, to list, I, I, I agree with that to a certain degree. But uh, again, I. Uh, my thoughts on the whole death pile situation is that's not really that doesn't really have to, anything to do with the profit margin on your items that has to do with you have a you have a sourcing you have a, an addiction to sourcing basically and people have this problem uh, you know because sourcing is the fun part you know going out and doing the treasure hunting so that has nothing really to do with you getting rid of your death pile uh, you should be listing every day. You should be stimulating that eBay algorithm when, guess what? These little low-grade items, these items that are quick to list, and yeah, they don't make you as much profit, but they're quick to list and they're easy to ship and all that stuff uh, is what keeps your eBay algorithm stimulated and keeps you making sales on a daily basis. Oh yeah, and going back real quick before uh, on when I did the math and everything, I want to mention, yes, I realize that uh, I did not factor in the fact that not every item that you list will sell. I know, I do realize that. However, uh, let me point out to you as well that also every item that you think is going to make you a $50 profit uh, ends up not making you that that much. It, you know, so there is that factor that you, you know, there's misevaluations to be, you know, had uh, on both ends. So I thought I would look in some of my recent solds and point out some items that you know, are deemed not worthy by a lot of sellers probably that I don't mind handling and it really didn't take me a lot of time and for the right price you can you can take these items that don't make you a lot of profit and make a really good uh, return on them and you're not spending a, as much time in my opinion is what these people are saying. I mean definitely like this item right here, this Elvis Presley VHS 2 pack ended up selling it for eight dollars I took a best offer uh, I paid 25 cents for it it's brand new sealed from the thrift store and uh, didn't sell super quick but I mean I just picked it up put it in my cart looked at it real quick I said it's only 25 cents so I'm gonna put it in my cart I'm not even gonna research it uh, so I spent 20 seconds on it there I was already sourcing other items at the thrift store anyways so it's not like I went to the thrift store to pick it up specifically or anything like that I literally took a photo of the front, flipped it over and took a photo of the back, So, and I was already listing, photographing other items, so it took me probably 20 seconds to photograph it. And for listing it up, I looked up the barcode and it came up and I filled out the listing for $9.99, and that probably took me, what, two minutes, three minutes? Conservatively, it probably took me three minutes. Realistically, it probably took me less time than that. And I made about a $5 profit on this item that I paid 25 cents for. Uh, that stimulated, you know, I got in a listing for the day that I otherwise wouldn't have gotten. I do not see the problem with this. This one I mentioned before is my, uh, those Pathfinder tail books that I bought like 300. So this is the example of where, since I paid like less than 10 cents a piece for these books, they were brand new and I got a bulk lot of 300. I only had to list this one item one time and, and I just keep selling it over and over again. That's a little bit of a different story, but still, I mean, would you pass up this profit? I mean, I, I won't. TV remotes, you know, TV and the remotes I always talk about selling all the time. They don't make you a ton of profit, but they're super easy. I wipe it down real quick. I throw batteries in it. I already got my, my, my smartphone right in front of me. I see that it shines an IR beam. I take two photographs of it whenever it's time for me to photograph items and I look up the model number and list it. I mean, I'm in it less five minutes or less in this item and it netted me over five dollars profit. Same for this remote. Here's a P90X. I mean, for some people this ain't good enough. You know, I paid five bucks for this. It ships media mail and $30 uh, sale. All I had to do was lay them out real quick. 
and take photographs of, uh, of everything. And also keep in mind, just like any item, when you're dealing with items like this, you'll find items that you determine, well, this was a learning experience, but next time I might consider passing, uh, depending on the price. For example, this Starbucks uh, golf ball mug that I thought was gonna uh, be pretty good, I ended up uh, only getting 20 bucks for it. Uh, paid three dollars for it. Probably wouldn't do that because of the shipping, uh, free shipping. Uh, it's just probably not quite worth it to me. Still made a profit. Was still worth my time for the the learning experience. Same with this uh, vintage Boy Scouts of America aluminum cooking set. Paid five bucks for this. Turns out I probably overpaid. Somebody did. Uh, I think I took a best offer on this one. Uh, ended up making about five dollars or more because I was able to ship it in a priority mail padded flat rate, but I probably would think twice uh, if somebody was asking five dollars for this again. If I could get it for a dollar, I might do it. Okay, so here's some videos if you want to get a different perspective on the topic. Uh, here's one that Raking, this is what started me in on this video, uh, was Raking Profits uh, video that came out a couple uh, days ago from the time I filmed this, uh, where he interviews this uh, reseller and the guy's talking about the bread and butter items. and. Uh, he's mentioning, you know, that there's other resellers that he interacts with that they pass up on anything that doesn't make them 50 bucks. And he's like, yeah, the, the, but they, they never buy anything. So it's just like, I, I don't understand that, that philosophy. Sure. If, if you're finding the $50 items all the time, then, then sure. Another video that I based this topic on was, uh, an older Rake and Profit video. And this is the one where he talks about, uh, uh, his buddy that has a death pile so there's a pretty interesting one to check out as well another one is by prof sales um they just boldly say stop selling low price items on ebay uh it's interesting to listen to them uh these two i'd say i agree with the least how to like they're just the problem i i have with their the way that they present this topic is they don't they don't really s explain the solution or what you should do instead is what I'm, I would think. Uh, I mean, their solution is just you should only list items that make you a high amount of profit, which to them is uh, what they consider a low profit item, I believe in the video is $10 profit or less. Well, I mean, again, if, if they if you're not able to source enough items that that make you that kind of profit, what are you going to do? And they're the ones that kind of come off with this whole that you at this point at that point you're basically working for minimum wage and I just don't agree with that and the reason I don't agree with it is I don't agree with the proposed amount of time it takes to handle these items and finally the bona fide hustler he mentions that he when he goes sourcing for eBay he's looking for items that make him $50 profit or more however I see him making videos and he's showing off items that uh, based on the numbers he's given aren't going to make him $50 profit. The thing about that though is the bona fide hustler has other ways to sell these items that are that he doesn't basically deem worthy for eBay. So he has a you know an antique booth and everything. So there is that factor as well. You got to keep that in mind. Some of these people who are claiming that they are only going to, you know, pick up profitable items $50 or higher, you know, they're talking about that's just what they're gonna sell on their eBay platform if you're like me and you basically only have time to sell on eBay which is, that's kind of how I am uh, obviously anything I pick up is intended for eBay for the most part but these are all interesting videos check them out so to sum it up my thoughts uh, you know you're already spending time sourcing and researching and what I mean is you're already going out there to the thrift store and yard sales um, you pick up an item, you research it, and it only makes you ten dollars. It's going to make you, you believe, ten dollars profit. You're telling me you're just going to put that item down because it doesn't make you twenty dollars, thirty dollars, fifty dollars profit? I don't agree with that unless you've got way more items than you can handle. Then second one, obviously, you will source the highest possible profit items that you can manage. Yes, you know, like I'm saying, I mean, you're you got to keep in mind not every single item you're going to pick up is going to be one of these low profit items you know you're going to get the home runs in there you know i'm not saying you should you know make your business model where i only i only sell items that only make me five dollars you know i'm not that's not what i'm saying so keep that in mind i'm just saying that 
the lower profit items are also uh, a good thing for you and it doesn't put you to minimum wage where you might as well just be working a regular job uh, thirdly I would say check your buying habits in general and that goes back to the whole uh, death the death pile situation you know yeah if you're if you got a, a huge death pile now you got to have a little bit of a it's not a death pile at that point you got to have a little bit of inventory so you can have something to list every day so these quick to flip quick to you know to handle uh, easy items like a remote control can uh, help supplement your daily listing uh, the next one what happened to the stimulating uh, the eBay algorithm is kind of I just basically just covered that and then finally as I mentioned like the bona fide hustler for example I mean these sellers are using multiple platforms to make different streams of income so you have to keep in mind that all these some of these sellers that are stating well on eBay I only sell items that make me $50 or higher you know take that with a grain of salt because they're probably selling lower profiting items on other platforms so that's something to consider anyways I hope you enjoyed the video it's just intended to be informative to give my side on if you're a new to eBay seller don't be afraid of the small items don't don't let somebody else's highlight reel intimidate you uh, don't think you have to be exactly like any of these resellers go out there experiment with the items and find what works for you and don't pass up on an item that's going to make you profit whenever you don't have anything else to list at home. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and together let's make some quick flips and easy ships on eBay.